Uh, my name is Stephen Betts. I worked for Arrow for seven months. I was the uh, leader of a team of alleged quantity surveyors. Uh, and um, it was not a happy experience for me, but they paid me well, so I stayed. Stephen Betts says he led a team of five other quantity surveyors at the Arrow International Buildings at Show Place in Christchurch for seven months in 2011. The 80-year-old remembers his pay being about $70,000 a year. Uh, Arrow were, were preparing what they call DRAs or DRRAs for um, Southern Response and uh, our, my job and the job of the team that I worked with was to prepare the estimates for the value of the repairs or restoration of the buildings involved. The DRA, a detailed repair or rebuild analysis, was given to customers to show how much it would cost to fix or rebuild their house. A recent High Court's ruling revealed Southern Response's practice of creating two DRAs with two different cost estimates. The lower cost DRA would be given to the customer, the other would stay with Southern Response. The High Court found that this was deceptive and misleading. Stephen Betts, who has been in this industry for most of his working life, worked at Arrow the year before AMI transitioned into Southern Response, after the government bought out its earthquake claims. He says he noticed things go missing from DRAs as they changed hands. He says his office-based jobs involved receiving information from an assessor who had been out to a quake damaged property and then collating that information into a DRA. I was working on an estimate uh, for our house and uh, there's a section on the DRA covering windows and curtains and I noticed that there were no curtains on this particular house. The, the, the person who had been out to the site and, and been in the house and made his report on his iPad was walking behind me as I noticed this so I called out to him, hey, are there any curtains in this house? And he replied to him, oh, there's heaps. I said, well, there's none on this, on this report you've given to me. Oh, I'll send it to you again, he said, which he did, and there were the curtains. And this, after he had written one of his DRAs. While I had priced certain items on my, on my DRA, they had disappeared by the time they were transferred back. Stephen Betts says he was required to complete six such reports a day, often on complicated and high-cost claims. He says the attitude the organisation had towards its customers was obvious. They were just numbers. There was no, there was no kind of uh, concept of, of them as being people or, 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 or that we should care for them or that we should be make sure that they got, that they got uh, what they were entitled to. It was just a question of churning out these reports as quickly as you could and six a day was what was expected. Former AMI and current Southern Response customers have described to checkpoints the incredible toll that sourcing out their claims has taken on them and their families, like the Dons. It's, it's been really, really hard. Thank goodness we're really strong as a couple, because I'm sure it must have told on a lot of people. In stress and in relationships, families, in many ways. Like Mark Gilmore and Althea Kellis. But it was just such a stressful time. If we'd have been paid out the, what we believe is the correct amount, our, our it would have changed our life completely. Yeah, our decisions would have been completely different. Like the Williamsons. Anxiety came to the fore and uh, health-wise. Um, Ellie's got a the um, couple of health problems uh, and that didn't help. didn't help at all. And it didn't help me either. I asked Stephen Betts if he felt any responsibility for his role in this. Yes, I do, and I was a bit uh, mildly embarrassed at, at, at wanting to stay with Arrow, but I, but I had my own interests as well, of course, and my own interests were that they were paying me well and I would stay as long as I could. But yes, I did feel, and uh, partly the reason that I'm here, I did feel this is not really an ethical thing to do. Stephen Betts says he resigned from Arrow after about seven months. He says he was struggling with the computer system they used and after several meetings with management, both parties agreed to part ways. In a somewhat ironic twist, he is now fighting Southern Response over his own claim, which is deadlocked. When Mr Betts resigned, he signed a confidentiality agreement with Arrow, so we asked him why he wanted to come forward and share his story of his time there. Because I'm sick of all of the uh, underhand dealings that's, that have been going on, of which I'm a, a quite aware. I don't feel that I have to be uh, cowed by that. I feel it's worth standing up and fighting it. Arrow International went into voluntary administration earlier this year, but a team from Arrow still works with Southern Response. We went to the communications company Southern Response is using for media inquiries. Our interview request was declined. 
Instead, in a statement from Southern Response Chief Executive Anthony Honeybone, it says Mr Betts exited his role at Arrow International under a confidential agreement and it can't comment further. Mr Honeybone says he understands that Mr Betts' claim that there was a six scope of works report quota per day is inaccurate and that accuracy was never compromised for speed. And it says it did not believe it would be appropriate to discuss the details of his case in the media. In Christchurch for Checkpoint, Logan Church.